Hello everyone! I will be reviewing the video game Assassin's Creed Origins. However, unlike a traditional video game review and commentary, I'll be examining this game through the lens of a modern neo-pagan perspective. Assassin's Creed Origins was released in October 2017 and is produced by Ubisoft. The game is set in ancient Egypt during the Ptolemaic period, around 48 BCE. While the story, graphics, and gameplay are really top-notch, AAA quality, what struck me the most is the beautifully rendered, historically based imaginings of what the city of Alexandria and the surrounding Giza Plateau could have looked and felt like during this era. First, let's visit the Temple of Serapis in ancient Alexandria. When I first saw this deity, I noticed a double-pronged staff and a three-headed dog, and I thought, hey, I wonder if this is Hades or Pluto? Nope. After some googling around, I found that this is a depiction of Serapis, a syncretic deity established by the Ptolemaic kings to unify both the Greek and Egyptian people in the area. <laughs> You'll notice that Serapis has a modius upon his crown, which is a type of uh, symbol that depicts like a grain jar, which uh, indicates fruitfulness. Here we see a breathtaking view of the city of Alexandria and the very famous lighthouse upon the shore. So let's grab our camel and make our way now to the Ision, the Temple of Isis. The temple is adorned with beautiful columns. As we make our way inside towards the inner sanctum, we see candles, incense, and other votive offerings all about. This is a very Hellenistic depiction of Isis. She's holding a downwards pointing sword in her right hand, and she's hugging a cornucopia in her left arm, and has a very large modius crown. We're now going to make our way to a temple that I believe is of Hecate or Trivia. It is unmarked on the map, so I'm taking an educated guess here. As I approached the temple uh, in this particular time in the game, I found it very interesting that there was four horses lined up outside, which I had never quite seen before. Um, it's a very small temple. Um, and interestingly, every time I've played this game and visited this temple, no one goes inside. Um, it's kind of very curious. As we make our way inside, you can definitely see the Triformis figure holding torches arm in arm. And as we make our way to the back of the statue, you can clearly see the other hands holding the cord and the blade, which this is very classic Hecate symbology. So I've discovered a second temple to Hecate Trivia, and at this next temple, it is always busy with worshipers and um, almost always beautiful chanting going on. So we'll make our way over to the second one that I have discovered thus far. So outside of this Hecate temple, there is a statue of Hebe and worshippers um, also providing her offerings. 
Hebe is the uh, cupbearer uh, to all of the gods and goddesses on Mount Olympus. I'm going to pause my commentary for most of this temple so that you can truly enjoy the experience of the chanting and the meditation. I'm now going to accelerate the game clock to turn to nighttime uh, so we can listen to some of the nighttime chants. <laughs> Before we make our way to the Temple of Sekhmet, I wanted to show everyone uh, a gorgeously rendered uh, ancient library of Alexandria. And inside uh, we have another mystery deity. Um, I have my educated guesses, but um, when we take a look, uh, we see a god seated with a horned uh, crown two rams on either side of him holding a cornucopia in his left arm. So um, I definitely think this is Aries or a depiction of Mars. Um, so that's my educated guess, but it's not marked on the in-game map. Now we will make our way to the last temple, the Temple of Sekhmet, and you'll begin to see a much more ancient Egyptian looking hypostyle temple rendering. The temple exterior features two gorgeous black obelisks and is lined with two rows of seated lions. And finally, we see the enormous carved black statues of Sekhmet seated uh, flanking either side of the entranceway. Hmm. As you come through the entranceway, 
there is a large open ceremonial area, which during one of the quests, you are taking part in a dramatic reenactment of the battle between Sekhmet and Isfet. This temple is just absolutely gorgeous. You can see ornate lotus columns and intricate hieroglyphics that decorate this, this whole temple. There is a ritual bath area just outside the inner sanctum and this bath area is open to the sky. And one of the things that I noticed is, uh, unfortunately, there are no female in-game characters uh, rendered inside the inner sanctums of any of these temples that I've explored thus far. Um, so from a modern perspective, that's, it's shocking to see, but I guess uh, maybe historically accurate. Once again, I'm going to pause the commentary so that you can just appreciate this magnificent golden Sekhmet statue and hear the chanting that is done inside of this temple. As virtual experiences such as these enter the everyday rhythms of our lives, these mediums beg the modern pagan to consider questions about the depictions of our deities in virtual spaces and what kind of experience this provides for us and the kind of norms of behavior that make the most sense uh, here. While other non-pagan gamers might look upon these renderings with either a passing curiosity or complete disinterest, for those of us who feel authentic connections to these goddesses and gods, entering these temples is more than simply playing a game for many of us. For example, while walking through these temples, I make my game character kneel or squat and walk slowly. Also, if there are loot items or coins that can be nabbed by the player, I'm now leaving these items undisturbed in the temples as a sign of respect and sacrifice. These temple recreations truly allow me to take a few moments from the fictitious game and feel like I'm actually going to visit the Dark Mother or the Fierce Lioness head of God. And for me, they do provide a momentary but authentic religious experience in a virtual space. I cannot wait to explore the rest of the game and uncover even more temples and deities. If I come across more interesting finds, I might consider doing another segment in the future. Assassin's Creed Origins is available for purchase on Windows PC, Steam, PS4, and Xbox One. What are you waiting for? Go get a copy today. Enjoy! <laughs> 